Welcome to our Learn Community Education webinar. I'm Dee Childers, founder of Life Changes Elder Care Consulting and Vice President for Learn, as well as the Community Education Chair. Our topic today is communication access technology. Our disclaimer is this co content is provided for general informational purposes only and not to be considered legal, financial, or health advice. Please consult with your professionals before taking action based on these, um, this information. Our speaker today is Krista Kramer uh, from the Idaho Assistive Technology Project. And Krista is a program coordinator for the Idaho Assistive Technology Project in Moscow, Idaho. She is currently coordinating communication access projects for vaccine sites and long-term care facilities in Idaho, as well as the Idaho I Can Connect program the National Deaf Blind Equipment Distribution Project. Krista also provides information and technology assistance on assistive technology and works with Idaho's low in interest financial loan program to help people acquire assistive technology and home modifications. She's been certified as an assisti assistive technology professional since 2001 and previously worked for 23 years as an independent living coordinator and transition management specialist for Disability Action Center. So Krista, thank you so much for being with us today. It's good to be here. I'm gonna start with a bit of an overview about the Idaho Assistive Technology Project and what services we can provide. We're a statewide information and referral source for basically all things disability and technology related. We provide training and technical assistance. We can do assistive technology consultations for um, students and for uh, people involved with vocational rehabilitation um, and others on a case-by-case -case, um, situation. We also have the low interest financing program that you mentioned, which helps people to purchase assistive technology that's not covered by insurance or costs beyond what insurance covers. And that can range from anything from a portable oxygen concentrator to a lift equipped vehicle. We have assistive technology resource centers around the state, um, one in Coeur d'Alene, one in Moscow, one in Boise. Um, and then we work with Life Incorporated over in the east part of the state. And we have, lending libraries of equipment. All sorts of assistive technology ranging from um, a feeding robot to um, ergonomic mice and um, head controls for computers, a little of everything in between. We also operate a statewide um, equipment redistribution website, which is kind of like Craigslist for assistive technology. And that website is called Idaho AT for All. And people can list equipment um, that they want to sell. They can look for items that might be available to be given away for free. Um, and it also includes all of the items in our lending libraries. So what is assistive technology? The official definition is that it's any item, piece of equipment, software program, or product system that's used to increase, maintain, or improve functional capabilities of persons with disabilities. I prefer to just say it's the tools that, that get the job done. And it ranges from very low tech to very high tech options, often and certain goals 
often have um, solutions at both the low tech and the high tech end of the spectrum, like communication devices. Um, some of those are as simple as a piece of paper with the alphabet printed on it at the low tech end to the high tech options, which might include you know, a $16,000 device controlled by eye gaze and a little of everything in between. The quote that's on this slide um, is by Judy Human, who is one of the leading um, disability rights advocates in the country who passed away just this past week. Um, she says that for most of us, technology makes things easier, but for a person with a disability, it makes things possible. And there are many different categories of assistive technology. Um, AT for vision, for hearing, for communication, for learning, cognition, and developmental purposes, mobility, seating, and positioning, daily living, environmental adaptations, vehicle modifications and transportation, computers and peripherals, leisure, sports, and recreation. And every one of those I could probably spend days talking about. So we're gonna try to pull this session um, into focusing on communication tools. I love this photo from the early days of COVID when <laughs> suddenly everyone shifted to communicating at a distance using um, video calling. The barriers to communication can be very complicated. They can be, it can involve hearing issues, vision issues, speech, um, physical and dexterity, cognitive issues, and language issues. And the communication environments vary dramatically. Some of the communication needs are specific to face-to-face -to -face communication, like oh, how do you deal with those masks that everybody's been wearing for the last few years, to how do you make sure that the person on the other end of a video call can actually see you and hear you, and if they can't hear, do they have access to captioning, like is hopefully being displayed on the bottom of my screen. Please excuse its errors. It is an artificial intelligence tool, but it can have a dramatic impact on increasing the amount of information that someone with a hearing impairment gets from a conversation. And it can be turned on on any Zoom call. <laughs> This next slide is an attempt to create a visual representation of what happens when someone is missing pieces of a conversation. The yellow letters represent sounds in the high frequencies, which are often the first to go um, when someone's hearing loss is due to um, noise noise injuries to their ears. The blue letters are the mid frequencies. The black letters with the highest contrast are in this case, the lower frequencies. And if you take a just a quick look at this message, it's a struggle to put all of those pieces in place. The yellow with its low contrast may or may not be getting through. 
and the difference between a word like can and can't, that, that T at the end of the word that say, says, no, you really can't, um, may be completely missed. And it can be crucial to the interactions between a care provider and someone who is trying to hear their message. One of the first tools that I've been advocating uh, for the last couple of years is the use of clear masks whenever those masks are needed. They allow lip reading, um, although that's with the caveat that only about 30% of English is available on the lips. So at best, lip reading is a tool to help clarify, but it's not necessarily um, a full form of communication. Another of the uh, benefits from using a clear mask is that you get to see people's faces and that can have real positive impact on an interaction in a situation with someone who is anxious, um, maybe someone with autism, to be able to see the real person behind the mask can help reduce that anxiety as well. Personal amplifiers are another tool for all of those folks who could benefit from having hearing aids, but may not have the financial resources to access them. There are devices like the old standard pocket talker, which is just an amplifier with a set of earbuds or a headset connected to it. The Pocket Talker does also allow you to do some adjustment of the tone to the higher or lower frequencies. Um, they've been around forever. They're durable. Um, they cost about $150. They've got good sound quality and a lot of power. A friend of mine had it purchased one of these for his father when he was in long-term care. And the next time he visited, he said, this was the first time I've had a real conversation with my dad in a decade. The Comfort Duet is like a pocket talker. It is a, an amplifier. And one of the advantages that it has is that it's Instead of a little roller button to control the volume, it's got big buttons with a big plus and a big minus on them um, to control volume. So they can be a better tool for um, someone who's got dexterity issues or otherwise might not be able to um, interact with the, the little roller knobs. The other thing that I wanted to mention about personal amplifiers is that anyone who has a smartphone can plug in uh, a set of earbuds and download a free app and use their smartphone as a personal amplifier. Even better yet, if you've got something like um, Apple AirPod, um, connected to your iPhone, because the AirPods also give you the capability of filtering out all of that um, hum uh, of background noise. It filters out the, the furnace noise and the oxygen machine noise and all of um, that noise that interferes with hearing the message that you're trying to get across. 
There are also um, assistive listening systems that instead of being connected to the microphone like you are with a pocket talker, they're two-piece systems with a transmitter and a receiver. And smartphones can also be used as one of these assistive listening systems by using the microphone on the smartphone and a set of wireless earbuds like the AirPods or the Beats Pro um, headset. And so these devices give you the ability to put the microphone on or near the audio source, um, whether that's whoever is speaking or um, your caregiver or spouse who is wandering about the house and their voice could be transmitted directly to the receiver that's plugged into your ears. Headphones can make a tremendous difference in people's willingness to use various assistive listening systems. Um, a lot, I get a lot of pushback um, at times with you using the over the ear style headphones. They're fabulous for um, filtering out background noise, but the number of times I've heard that they keep falling off my head or um, unwillingness to wear them because they mess up somebody's hairdo <laughs> made me look at other options. Um, and some of those, like the um, the bone conduction headphones in the, the center image, they are Bluetooth, so they're completely wireless and they can be connected to any Bluetooth audio source, whether that's a Bluetooth transmitter plugged into the television or the um, Bluetooth on your smartphone or a Bluetooth remote microphone. So you can get that sound directly to the headset without any wires. Another of my favorites is the collar style um, speakers, which you just wear around your neck and it puts the speakers within just a few inches of your ears. So it can allow um, other people in the room to sort of hear what's going on without getting blasted by the volume on the TV. Another of my favorite headsets is this uh, vertical in the ear ultralight headset because they're complete, completely wipeable. Um, so if they were being used among multiple residents, um, they could be um, cleaned and they're very lightweight and they don't actually plug your ears. They just sit in the outer part. And um, I, anyway, as a wired headset, they're one of my favorites. Another of the tools for getting the message across for someone who doesn't hear well is speech to text captioning. Just like I have turned on the captioning on this video, um, you can use a smartphone or a tablet with an app like Google Live Transcribe or Live Captioning or Live Transcribe to um, just print out everything that is being said. Some of the apps like dictation require that you say the punctuation, but as the artificial intelligence speech to text is improving, more and more of them are getting better and better at putting in the punctuation so that the captions aren't just one long <laughs> run on sentence. Ah, TV amplifiers. 
So it's another of those realms that there have been an explosion of options coming out lately. You no longer have to be um, involved in the, the television volume wars, <laughs> whether that's at home or in a shared room in a facility. There are lots of options. And now that so many televisions are smart televisions, they have the Bluetooth capability built in so that all you have to do is to connect any Bluetooth headset. And there are those that um, Bluetooth headsets that don't have to be on your head. Um, the Zulu wearable speakers can actually be magneted around your neck. Um, and again, the, then the speaker is just a few inches from your ear. Um, for uh, televisions that are older than and don't have Bluetooth built, a Bluetooth transmitter built in, you can actually plug in a Bluetooth transmitter to the audio jacks and send that Bluetooth signal from the, the television to whatever Bluetooth headset you would like to use. There are also crossover devices like the Be Here Access headset, which allows both reception from a Bluetooth audio source and it allows you to transition to an environmental microphone, which is on the um, the device itself. So you can switch back and forth from audio, audio from your smartphone and only hear what's coming from the smartphone to the environmental microphone that will allow you to use the device just like you would use a hearing aid. And it also allows you to create a custom profile based on your particular hearing loss. Voice amplifiers can be another great tool um, for communication in a whole variety of settings. Um, the small personal sized ones can be used to amplify the voice of someone who doesn't speak very loudly or in a room where they're trying to speak over background noise. They can also be used by a caregiver with the headset, trying to communicate with someone who wouldn't tolerate having um, a headset put on them. And you just put the speaker um, on the table in front of them. And again, bringing that sound closer to them can really help. There are also portable PA systems um, for announcements and group activities and the fit and fall proof classes. Um, if you're having trouble hearing in those situations, ask for a PA system for as a reasonable accommodation for those sorts of group activities. One of the um, long-term care facilities I visited in the Boise area, I asked if they were using a portable PA system for um, their group activities. And they said, oh, that's Paula. She has the loudest voice. This uh, kind of helps <laughs> give everyone the ability to be heard. Amplified telephones are another of those tools that can help people um, continue to communicate with everyone they want to continue to communicate with. Um, the Clarity Phone on the left is a model that includes big buttons and amplification and an amplified ringer. And it also has um, programmable buttons that you can 
put pictures of the individual whose phone number is programmed into that phone or into that button so that with a single touch, rather than having to remember a whole string of numbers to dial the phone, um, it allows many people to be able to continue independently making phone calls. The Serene Hear All is an example of another way to amplify a cell phone and give people single access, single button access to dialing um, the, the uh, call answering button when this is synced to a smartphone would allow you to answer a call or to access Siri or Google and dial by voice. Caption phone calls are another of those tools that are now widely available, whether you use a landline, um, as in this picture, um, a specialized telephone with a screen will allow you to read everything that is being said to you. But you don't need the special phone and you don't need a landline. Um, you can also use a computer and website and read what the other person is saying on your computer screen or you can download a smartphone app and again, get that captioned um, feedback of what the other person is saying. And real-time texting is now becoming available in more and more areas of the country, which also allows you to get real-time um, text versions of what is coming through your smartphone. There are telephone relay services. Um, and the relay service allows someone with a hearing or speech limitation to have a communication assistant in the, the middle of a conversation to help relay from one mode to another. In the good old days, that was a TTY where a deaf person would type on a machine and the relay operator would read what was on that machine to a person on the other end of a phone call. Now, the majority of the signing deaf community is using video relay where they would sit in front of a video camera and sign to an interpreter who could then relay their conversation to any, any person at any phone number in the United States, any time of the day or night. And there's also a relay service for people with speech impairments. Um, trained communication assistants will, um, listen to what the individual is saying, and then hopefully because of their training, we'll be able to understand and relay that um, to whoever they're trying to call. But they can also facilitate uh, conversations when someone is using a speech generating device um, and then help them relay the message coming out of the speech device to someone on a phone call. We're gonna switch now from most of that intro information was talking about um, tools for people with hearing impairments, but there are also a variety of communication barriers if you're blind. Um, this image is of the Blind Shell Classic 2 phone, which is one that is specially designed for people who are blind or low vision. It has a talking interface, so everything on the screen can be spoken aloud. It, it also has tactile buttons. Not that um, you can't 
use a touch screen if you are blind, if that touch screen um, is on a phone that has the accessibility features available. But some people just prefer to use regular, I can feel it buttons. And so this is one of those options. It also allows you to control it by voice. Another realm of communication challenge is with people who have cognitive barriers to communication. And so some of the tips that are widely um, shared about communicating when there are cognitive issues is things like using plain language. And there's a whole organization focused on using plain language, I believe that's what it's called, plainlanguage.org. Another of the tips that can be helpful is to write or to record instructions to give information in small chunks and to use symbol supports. If you write and or record instructions that can be sent along with someone, um, that can also enhance communication between caregivers and medical providers and schools and um, all those other situations where information needs to get um, from point A to point C. There are also a variety of simplified interfaces. Um, tools that are useful, whether the communication barrier is low vision or cognitive or dexterity issues. Sometimes the same uh, feature benefits many kinds of disability issues. The phone on the left has four programmable buttons, again, ones that you can identify with a photo of the person whose number is recorded there. Um, Android also has an app available called Big Launcher, which can turn the smartphone screen from all of those little tiny icons into a very clear, high contrast, six button interface. Then the trick is, like when I tried to get my dad to use it, was getting him to switch from something that he was familiar with. The grand pad is a tablet designed specifically for um, seniors for or for people with a, without a lot of technology background. And it has a simple interface that allows, easy video calling, easy access to email or family photos. And again, um, can be a, a great tool for folks who are otherwise not comfortable with using all of the new fancy technologies. Another communication realm of technology is caregiver call systems. And there are a whole variety of different needs to be addressed with caregiver call systems. Um, the picture on the upper right, the Alert Master AL10, is a device that was designed for the the deaf and hard of hearing community, um, a, a home system to alert someone who is deaf to what's happening in the environment. So in this case, it's pictured with a doorbell and with a bed shaker. So, but you can also connect other sensors for smoke detectors or for baby cry monitors or for um, motion detectors. So when any of those things happen in the environment, it will 
um, flash the lights, um, identify which of those is happening on the front of the device. It can shake the bed, bed with the, the round hockey puck there. Um, and I actually, I purchased one of these for my grandparents um, when my grandfather was primary caretaker and he heard nothing when his hearing aids, hearing aids came out at night. And my grandmother had lost a leg to diabetes and was sleeping in a recliner in the other room. And so we put the doorbell next to a recliner and whenever she needed to get up, all she had to do was to press the doorbell, which would vibrate the hockey puck in under grandpa's pillow. And he would then get up and be able to help her. And what that meant was she wasn't taking the risks of falling by getting up alone. And he was actually able to sleep. And it made a huge difference for both of them. And then after she passed away, the doorbell was installed outside so that he knew when Meals on Wheels was, was arriving and they weren't having to bang at the door. But there are also um, switch activated caregiver call buttons. Um, you can use intercoms to um, just create a monitor from one room to another so that you can talk to each other even if someone um, has a mobility impairment and it reduces the having to run back and forth. There are also alerting systems and monitors designed for everything from being able to uh, keep an eye on a child in another room to which could also be used um, to keep an eye on um, someone who can't get out of bed. Um, there are motion detectors or mats that will set off an a, a alert when someone's feet hit the ground or hit that mat, um, which again can be the difference for a caregiver of knowing that someone is safely in their own space versus when they leave their room and head for the kitchen. And there are also apps that can be used as trackers that um, where you can set a perimeter. So say someone with a developmental disability who wanted to walk to school on their own um, and was capable of doing that. If the as long as they stay within that perimeter of their normal path, everything's fine. But if suddenly the tracker is picked up on a bus headed downtown, an alert would go to the caregiver. So it's one of those tools for communication that can promote independence while providing safety at the same time. There are also quite a number of ways that um, smart technology is getting involved in caregiving in situations like providing continuous glucose monitoring. And particularly for someone who's blind, um, this is a fabulous tool because the, the sensor just gets attached to your skin and whenever your glucose readings get out of the range, tolerance range, um, your smartphone or your smartwatch or even a message can get sent to a remote caregiver to, to let you know that um, your sugar levels need attention. And last week I was giving a presentation like this and someone came up after the presentation to show me one of these aura rings that's um, in the other picture. 
And she told me that she had been using hers because she's been dealing with post COVID or long COVID for the last 27 months. And this ring actually allows her to um, record on her smartphone, her oxygen levels, her uh, heart rate, her temperature. So every time her um, fever would start to spike, she would get an alert from the ring to her smartphone. And she was thrilled with it. <laughs> Another tool for communication with the wider world is smart speakers, um, tools like the Amazon Echo or the Echo Show, or now Google has their version and um, Lenovo has theirs. And anyway, multiple options there, but they can give you access to controlling phone calls and music and getting reminders and listening to audiobooks and playing games and asking for information from the internet just by talking to the device. And the ones with screens, you can actually use that screen to get remote supports. Like you can hold up a bottle of something and ask Alexa, what am I holding? And get an answer that this is a jar of turmeric instead of, um, you know, this is a, a bottle of pills. And the re remote supports are also available through the camera on your phone. So you can use remote services like Ira and point your phone at a scene and have someone in a remote location see what your camera is seeing and then talk to you and give you directions or help you find things or help you accomplish tasks that um, require someone just to take a look. <laughs> And more and more, there are remote caregiving services being provided via these devices so that, um, say, someone who gets anxious or who needs reminders on a regular basis can have a person, a real face, that comes on their screen and talks to them whenever they need that support. There are a bunch of tools now for people who have difficulty reading or seeing a screen to understand everything that's going on on that screen. Um, the built-in accessibility features to do that now are amazing. Um, the new, new spoken content option on an iPhone, and I'm sure there's an Android version as well, um, allows you to use a little controller, have it pop up on your screen, and you can hit play, and it will start reading everything that's on the on the screen. Or you can use the finger pointer and touch a place on the screen, and it will start reading from that point where you have just touched. Or if you're completely blind, you can turn on voiceover or talk back and have access to everything that is on the screen and have that spoken aloud to you. Those require a different set of gestures than to activate um, your interactions with what's on the screen. But And that can be a bit of a learning curve, but it makes everything accessible these days, as long as the websites have been designed to be accessible.
it, seeing AI and envision AI are a couple of my favorite uh, multi tools for people who have um, barriers to interacting with text or barriers to see what's going on around them. And they have multiple channels that allow you to scan things like point your camera at an envelope or at a sign and have it read out loud to you. Or you can take a picture of a letter and have that com converted to text, which is then spoken aloud to you. It's even getting to the point of being able to recognize recognizable handwriting. So somebody writes you a note and you can point your camera at it and have it read you the note. And it also has channels for reading barcodes and currency. And if a face is re associated with your contact, if you've taken a picture on your smartphone, these apps will even provide you with the information about who that person is that you, you have pointed your camera at. Accessible computing is another of those realms that can be used to help people stay in touch, especially if um, they have barriers to getting out of the house. And now you can control a computer by voice. Um, on smart devices, you can use assistive touch. So a single touch will allow you to access all of the different gestures for smart device. You can use head control or chin control or eye gaze or foot control or switch control. Um, there are also um, interfaces that will reduce the amount of tremor that gets translated through a mouse or a touch screen to allow um, you to more accu accurately target what is on the screen that you're trying to activate. And then there are speech generating options, um, which range from free to sophisticated $250 apps. Um, Clericom, the one on the right, is a $17 app that allows you to record categories and then specific phrases related to that category and then have that message spoken aloud with mm, three touches to the screen. Select the category, select the, spe the specific message within that category, and then hit the play button. Um, some of the apps also allow you to then write a message and send it via text or email. And some of them can actually allow you to use that device for a phone call as well. The app on the, the left is ProLoco to Go, which is a symbol based system. So, for someone who has difficulty with reading, um, it provides the symbol support that would allow someone to touch an icon to communicate their message. And of course, there are the low-tech uh, communication apps that, again, you can use a board um, with those symbols. And in a lot of environments, you know, I've even heard of those symbols being used, painted on a beach ball at the pool, but um, they give a, an expanded opportunity for communication when the ability to produce clear speech is um, a barrier. 
And then another of the considerations for using high-tech uh, communication devices is for people who are in bed or are in wheelchairs, how do you keep that communication device in a position that they can see and interact with it? And there are a wonderful range of mounting devices that can either be clamped onto a table or um, roll on the floor and they have movable arms that can actually be positioned wherever the individual needs it. Um, the one in the lower right is actually clamped onto a bed rail. And one of the people I've worked with over the years also has one um, connected to her bed rail because she's often awake in the middle of the night and the rest of the family is asleep and she would otherwise be bored out of her mind. And so she's got the iPad positioned um, so that she can can reach it and entertain herself during those long, dark nights. And here is my contact information. If anything, I guess the biggest message to I want to share is when you have questions related to how technology might make the world a better place for um, someone that you know, give us a call. And we have the possibility of, you know, setting up appointments with you, or if you can't get to one of our centers, we can send equipment out from our libraries. We can brainstorm with you. We can help you figure out what the path to funding the devices that they might need, um, where you might find those options, give us a call. Wow, Krista, what an exceptional presentation. I learned so much. And I've been in the business for 11 years and had no idea about half of what you talked about or more. Thank you, thank you. This is so valuable, Krista incredibly informative, you know, in the area of technology just continues to evolve daily. And daily. Just, I'm, I'm overwhelmed with the tools. I, I was kind of like on my phone going here and going there and going here to the, <laughs> the tools that you're talking about. And, and it's like, no, you'll miss something else. So that oh, was speaking of which. Yes. Sources. Oh, great. Um, so these padlets, a, a padlet is like a, a Pinterest board of links to other information. And these three padlets are ones that I've assembled related to communication access of various sorts. And for anyone who has, hey, I meant to get QR codes posted with them, but hit a one of those technology issues <laughs> um, but quick way to capture them is to take your smartphone and snap a picture <laughs> so that you'll have it for later and um, most of the items that I talked about in the presentation are listed in at least one of these padlets so and then a number of the organizations um, such as the Patient Provider Network and Bridging Voice and a number of resources for organizations who are trying to put communication access and plans in place um, are listed in these padlets as well. So again, Krista has been our presenter today and just a big, huge thank you so much for your presentation. And I look forward to future presentations with you because we talked about so many other areas of assistive technology. So I'm going to get you on my schedule and I'm going to get on your schedule to do because <laughs> this was amazing, amazing, Krista. So Thank you very much for your time today. I know it's been a very busy several weeks for you, um, kind of probably super, super sized weeks. <laughs> so thanks for making time to do this presentation for us today.
You're welcome. Um, if those of you that are watching this presentation now have not already joined the Learn mailing list, I encourage you to do so. And here's the website where you can go to to join our mailing list. We typically only mail something out once a month, and that's letting you know what new recordings are out there or if there's some particular live events. So you must confirm your subscription as well. So after you sign up, you must go back in and confirm that you want to be signed up for the Learn mailing list. We will not spam you. And just as a, kind of our new style of doing educational sessions, we have channels now, and they're channels of health, wealth, lifestyle, caregiving, technology, community resources, with more new channels to come, Alzheimer's Association, the Justice Alliance for Vulnerable, Vulnerable Adults, and others uh, will be shown, but we have over 100 videos already out there in our video library, and they are free to you, your family members, your friends. We don't care where they're at. We would like to make this information available and helpful to anybody in this realm of needing to help support someone else as a caregiver or in any other form. So you can go to our website at learnidaho.org and forward slash channels to get the videos that kind of fit within each of these categories. This is our mission, helping people navigate the joys and challenges of aging and caregiving. And we want to be a trusted source of information um, for the community, by the community. Many of our presenters are members and their membership and sponsorship is what allows us to provide this information to all of you free of charge. So you can also reach our membership directory online if you're looking for particular professionals that are part of this organization. Once again, I thank you all very much for being here today and for um, taking advantage of what we have to offer through LEARN. So I thank you and have a good day.